Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a new study that identifies a pretty interesting way of measuring distances in the universe. In this case, using the brightest and most powerful objects in the universe, quasars. And this is actually based on a recent observation and a recent analysis that found a very interesting correlation between various types of radiation that typical quasars produce. And so in other words, the scientists might have discovered a completely new but also extremely useful standard candle, also known as the cosmic distance ladder, that allows us to measure things in the universe in terms of distances. Which is, by the way, one of the most difficult things to do in astronomy. And the reason for this is really simple. Even though calculating distances to some of the nearest objects is no longer particularly difficult for scientists, when it comes to calculating distances to various galaxies or various objects really, really far away, it becomes really, really difficult, mostly because we don't really have any relative parameters here in order to establish the true distance. For example, is this galaxy here 1 million light years away and a relatively similar size to the Milky Way? Or is this galaxy 25 million light years away from us and about 5 times larger than the Milky Way? And so because of this, over the past few decades, scientists have been trying to discover more and more of these so-called standard candles in order to learn how to measure distances in space. Now, for a lot of closer objects to us, such as various stars, various globular clusters, and most of the objects within a few thousand light years away from us, we can still use the ancient technique known as parallax. And that's essentially something that the scientists have been doing for hundreds of years by measuring the angle to a certain object from two different perspectives. And so by knowing the angle, we can generally establish the distance to a certain star or even some of the global clusters and nebula located in the Milky Way. With the Hubble telescope being able to measure this to an extreme precision, allowing us to see really, really far away in the galaxy. But in the last few decades, a lot of new techniques have been developed, and many of them depend on some sort of a brightness fluctuation, or in some cases by watching something explode and knowing its actual magnitude and then comparing it to the magnitude we observe. And so a lot of the time it's either a nova or a supernova, with the most common example being a type 1a supernova that generally has a relatively similar brightness and produces the approximately same amount of energy. The majority of studies trying to determine distances to various galaxies usually employ various observations of type 1a supernova from various galaxies. Here's an example of SN1994d that obviously allowed the scientists to measure an extremely precise distance to this particular galaxy. The galaxy known as NGC 4526. But one of the first and I guess most amazing standard candles that was used for decades and decades and that were actually used by Edwin Hubble to technically prove that we live in a universe and not just in a very big galaxy are the objects known as Cepheid variables. Here is one of the more famous examples. This is a Cepheid variable located in the Andromeda galaxy. And the thing about Cepheid variables is that these are stars that tend to change their brightness extremely periodically. But at the same time, their total brightness directly correlates to the period of these uh, changes, with the brightness graph usually looking something like this. But this period right here changes based on the total luminosity of the star, which means that by knowing how fast the star changes its brightness, we can usually determine its total brightness, which also means that it then turns into this standard candle. And this is how a lot of distances in the Milky Way galaxy and in a lot of nearby galaxies have been very accurately measured in the last few decades. And so these Cepheid variables are some of the best indicators of distances in space. And back in the days, back in 1929, by discovering one of these stars in the Andromeda galaxy, Edwin Hubble was able to definitively prove that the distance to the Andromeda galaxy was approximately 2 million light years away from us suggesting that we actually have a lot of these galaxies in the universe and we don't just live in a single galaxy. But you can learn more about this in one of the previous videos. But when it comes to measuring some of the most distant objects in the universe, so for example, very, very distant galaxies or extremely distant um, quasars or galactic clusters, it becomes much more problematic. In this case, we have to rely on some other principles. So obviously some supernovas still work, in this case, we can still kind of use type 1a supernova if they're still visible, but even supernova become somewhat invisible at extremely far distances of billions of light years. And so here, there's really only one way to measure things, or at least there was one way until now. 
When it comes to some extreme distances of billions of light years, we can only try to rely on the idea of redshift from the expansion of the universe. And so basically by measuring the redshift to a certain galaxy or to a certain distant object, we can sometimes approximate the distance to this object. In this case, the scientists usually rely on some of the more well-known observations from, for example, various powerful gamma rays or various powerful ultraviolet emissions coming from regions of galaxies where a lot of stars have been produced. But because today there's also a problem known as the Hubble tension, to some extent these particular measurements are not entirely accurate. And so for the longest time now, the scientists have been trying to discover a new way to measure distances to these extremely faraway objects. And more specifically, this would help us to possibly solve this so-called Hubble tension. And it looks like at least one study recently came up with at least one new method that might actually work. And this method relies on what we usually refer to as quasars, objects that unfortunately no longer exist in the modern universe, but that used to exist everywhere in the ancient universe. And we know so because they are the brightest objects we still see from billions and billions of light years away from us. In a nutshell, quasar, or quasi-stellar object, is basically a supermassive black hole in the middle of a typical galaxy that's been absorbing so much matter at its center that it essentially turned into an extremely bright and very very powerful object, generating more energy and more luminosity than pretty much the entire galaxy where it's located. And because so many quasars have been discovered in the last few decades, with hundreds of thousands of new quasars discovered pretty much on a regular basis, they've already become extremely useful in a lot of different other practical ways. For example, one of the previous videos discussed this idea of quasars being used in modern navigation systems. As a matter of fact, here's a modern map of all of the quasars that are currently used for anything from GPS to a lot of other systems that rely on extremely precise navigation. And without quasars, it would actually be impossible to have anything as accurate as GPS. But because quasars were actually very widespread and existed in many different regions of the universe, with some of the first ones being observed only a few hundred million years after the creation of the universe, in theory, if we could find a way to measure distances to these objects, this could hypothetically allow us to suddenly measure distances during the periods of the universe that were previously unavailable to us which would also dramatically expand the distances we can measure and also help us understand how the universe expands as well. And because a typical quasar functions very differently from a typical supernova, by finding a supernova really close to a quasar, we can then also use both to try to determine the exact distance to a certain part of the universe. In other words, a quasar can provide an independent measurement of a certain object far, far away in space while at the same time helping us figure out the Hubble constant. And so the scientists behind the study you can find in the description below discovered something really interesting. In this case, they compared the X-ray measurements of 2300 quasars that were initially assessed by the NASA's Chandra telescope and compared them to the ultraviolet measurements from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. And by using the data from both of these telescopes, they managed to confirm the assumption that many scientists had for quite a while now, that there is a very strict correlation between the amount of ultraviolet radiation and the amount of X-rays produced by a typical quasar. And although scientists knew about this relationship from other objects, this is the first time it was used in quasars, and all of this sort of makes sense. So what we know about quasars is that generally all of their power comes from the accretion disk around them, and for the most part, a lot of ultraviolet radiation is usually formed in the disk itself. But there's also a lot of different types of hot gas and tons and tons of electrons moving at ridiculously high speeds, close to the speed of light. And generally, when a typical ultraviolet electron hits a typical electron, especially the ones that have a lot of energy, it will produce X-rays. And because of this, the more material there is around the black hole, the more X-ray and UV radiation a typical quasar will produce. And so by measuring the total luminosity of X-rays and then comparing this to total luminosity of the ultraviolet radiation, we can generally use this to establish a distance to a certain quasar, using a somewhat similar principle to how we measure distances in a typical Cepheid variable. And with new observatories being able to discover even more quasars and analyze their luminosity in X-rays and UV light with even more accuracy, it means that we'll be able to establish distances to these very distant objects with extreme precision, at least in some of the future studies. 
And so for now at least this is actually a really important discovery, at least when it comes to measuring distances and then also measuring the idea of the expansion of the universe. Which means that hopefully in the next few years we'll be able to finally figure out what is happening with this Hubble constant and also possibly figure out the actual size of the observable universe. But I guess for now that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Once we learn more I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.